All right, so you might be wondering, hey, Will, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Why is it that you're having to record this stuff again? Because this doesn't sound like recitation that we did today during class, and you would be absolutely correct. This is not the recording from recitation. Immediately after class, I went back to the TA lab and decided to go take a listen to the recording that was made during class, recitation today, and I found out that it got stuck in a feedback loop where it was recording the output from my computer, which was also outputting what my microphone was picking up, which then stuck it in this never-ending feedback loop, and you just couldn't hear anything, and it was stupid, and unfortunately that recording was unsalvageable. So, I'm going to go back and re-record everything from recitation today. I've already gone back over all of the notes that we took today. Those are still located here, so we can still see all the stuff we did earlier today during recitation but I will be rewriting them for your benefit just so you can have the audio to go along with it since uh, some of this stuff wouldn't make too much sense without being able to hear it. So we started off by talking about exactly what a dictionary was and we'll go into exactly why we want to use it in a moment. So a dictionary is going to be a mapping of key value pairs. But it's not very readily apparent what a key value pair actually is. So for example, let's take a look at the other kind of data structures that we already know. The first data structure we know is going to be a list. And so in a list, we have items that are in a certain order. Let's say 3, 4, 9, and true. So here's our list. And in this list, we would access things by requesting the data from the list at a particular index. So let's say, for example, I'm going to write all my code that you would enter in Python in blue here. We're going to say something like my list is equal to 3, 4, 9, and true. And if, for instance, we wanted to print out, for example, the second element in the list, that would be this particular element right here, 4. I would say, OK, print my list, square bracket, 1, square bracket. And so what we notice here is that Python indexes each element in the list with an integer, starting at 0 here and ending at the number of elements in the list minus 1. So we'd have element 0 is the first element in the list, element 1 is the second, 2 is the third, and then 3 is the fourth element in the list, and the length of this list is 4. Length of my list equals 4 or I should say, yields 4. Now a dictionary is different in this. You can think of it as being somewhat similar, but instead of having numerical indexes, we're going to replace those indices with something called a key. And a key can be any immutable data type. And we'll talk about immutable, immutable versus mutable a bit later, but for now we're going to stick with something very common like integers or strings. So in a dictionary, what we have is we're going to have keys that map to a certain value. Now when we would want to use something like this is if, let's say we had a phone book. So we're trying to make a phone book. And just a list of phone numbers isn't very useful to us. So we could do this a couple of different ways. If we didn't want to use a dictionary, it would involve us making two lists, one list for the names. So we'd have a list of names. Another list of names, we'd have Will, James, and Jay. And then we'd have a list 
of phones. Then over here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one. And so this would be rather annoying because we'd have to remember that index zero was Will and then index zero over here was Will's phone number and then index one in the list of names is James and then index one in the list of phones is the phone number for James. And that kind of gets really annoying, especially if you start deleting things. You have to make sure that you delete things in both lists and if you forget to delete one thing, then it gets really stupid and you lose track of where you are. So we have a data structure called a dictionary that takes care of that for us. So in our phone book example, if we did this with, I'm going to say this is lists. If we did it with a dictionary, it would look something like this. We would have our keys, and we'd have a value. And so we would say, OK, I want the name of a person to be the key. And the key is essentially like an index in a list. So over here, we want the key to be the person's name because that is a unique identifier. So a person's name uniquely identifies the person. So for example, we would have person will as a key. And the value would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we draw an arrow from the key to the value. And so this says that if I go to the dictionary and request the key will, it is going to return to me the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Because in the dictionary, the value associated with the key will is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, because the arrow points to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Likewise, we go through and add James. That goes to 8901234. And J goes to 5678901. So, how would we do this in Python code? Well, let's say we're starting off from scratch and we don't have anything. So, the first thing we needed to do is to declare a dictionary. So, to declare the dictionary, we would say the name of the dictionary, which in this case I'm going to call my D, is equal to an empty set of curly braces. And so these curly braces, generally speaking, whenever you see curly braces in Python, mean dictionary. So now that we've declared this, we need to actually add the values into the dictionary. Now, the adding syntax for adding things into a dictionary is slightly different than the adding syntax that we would use in a list. Because if you remember with lists, the syntax would be something like my list dot append, and then whatever we wanted to append. Well, this is not how we do it in dictionaries. Not how we add to dictionary. What we do instead is we just say the name of the dictionary, which in this case is my D, and then a square bracket, and then whatever the key is, which in this case the key is will, square bracket, equals, and then whatever value we want to assign to that particular key. So in this case, the value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Likewise, we can add the rest of them. So we'll say James equals string of 8901234. And lastly, my D, square bracket, J A Y, square bracket equals 5678901.
And so now we have all three of our items in the dictionary. So now if we print out the dictionary, Python would give us curly brackets and then a key, colon, and then whatever the value is, and it would list all of our items in the dictionary. So now, if we wanted to actually see what the dictionary looked like, it would look something like this right here. So that's how we put things into a dictionary, but how do we get them out? Well, it's the same way that we would get things from a list, except we replace the index number, so how we used an integer with a list. We replace it with the key, just like how we added it. So if we wanted to print out the phone number that was associated with Will, what we would do is we would write something like, in the correct color, print. Inside the print, we could say my D, square bracket, and the key we wanted to print, which would be Will. Close the square bracket, close parentheses, and this prints one, two, three, four, five, six, seven onto your screen. So that's how we get things out of a dictionary, how we get the value out. Now this relationship, the relationship of this arrow only goes one way. This says that we can use a key to find a particular value. Notice that there is not an arrow going backwards. We cannot ask the dictionary, hey, I have a value, I want to find out what key it's associated with. This does not work. You cannot go backwards. You can only go from key to value, not the other way around. So let's say we wanted to figure out whether something was in the dictionary or not. If we wanted to know whether something was in the dictionary, we use the in keyword. So you've already seen quite a few uses of the in keyword before. You can use it to figure out whether a particular item is in a list. You can use it to figure out whether a character or other string is located inside of a larger string. And now we can use it to tell us whether a particular key is located in the dictionary. So what we would say is if we wanted Python to tell us whether J was in the dictionary, we would say, or actually, yes, let's assign that to a variable. So is in D equals the key we're looking for, J in my D. And so if we inspect the value of is in D, this is true. Because if we go and look at the dictionary, the dictionary does contain J. Likewise, if we said is in D equals Josh in my D, this would yield false. Because there is no key Josh in the dictionary. So that is how we use the end keyword to determine whether something is in the dictionary. Now we cannot attempt to get a value from something in the dictionary if the key doesn't exist. So for example, if I tried to do my D at Josh. and print this, Python would give me lots of red text. More importantly, it would tell me that there is not a key named Josh in this dictionary. So this throws an error. So the way we get around this error is either by using the in keyword here or by using the get function on the dictionary. So if we're not sure whether a key exists in the dictionary, but we just want a shorthand way 
of getting something from the dictionary without having to worry about it throwing exceptions or not, we can say print and then the name of the dictionary, my d dot get, and then inside of parentheses, the key that we're looking for, Josh. And then this, because that key does not exist, will print none. If the key did exist, it would print out the value that's associated with that key. One of the important things to remember about dictionaries that makes it different from list or any of the other data types you use is that there is no ordering in a dictionary. So in a list, the list that we talked about earlier, this 349 true, there is an ordering. When we add things to this list, it would be added right here at the end of the list. With a dictionary, there isn't an ordering that's actually important to you. It doesn't really matter. You can't use the dictionary's internal ordering for any purpose. So essentially, it's like saying that all the things you add to the dictionary are just floating around in this little cloud. They just kind of exist in here. And then if you request one, it goes and gets it from somewhere in the cloud and then tells you what the value is over here. So you can't use it like a list and that when you add things, you can assume that they're at the very end or the very beginning or whatever. We can also remove things from a dictionary. We remove things from a dictionary almost the same way that we remove things from a list. The only difference being, like pretty much everywhere else, we replace the numerical index with the key. So for example, if I wanted to remove Will's entry from the phone book, I could say del my d square bracket 